It was April 15, 2019, when fire tore through Paris's beloved Notre Dame. Plans to restore and reconstruct the great cathedral were launched almost immediately. Two plus years later, our Seth Doan has a progress report. It's at the heart of Paris in every sense of the word. But this landmark, which has endured since the 12th century, is now almost unrecognizable inside, as we saw when Sunday morning was granted rare access. Today, Notre Dame is a cathedral of scaffolding. That's after that April 2019 fire, likely sparked by an electrical short, which engulfed the church. The magnificent 160-year-old Gothic spire toppled and much of the roof collapsed. Remarkably, though, most of the main stone structure remained, and French President Emmanuel Macron vowed to rebuild within five years. Je veux que cela soit achevé d'ici cinq années. Lead contamination from the destroyed roof and spire is just one of the many challenges slowing renovation work and even access to the monument, as we found out. So they've given us completely new clothes, which we will wear and then dispose of. We suited up this past summer to go high on the scaffolding over the cathedral to meet from this commanding perch the man in charge of the renewal effort, Jean-Louis Jojolin, who does not exactly have much time to enjoy the vistas of Paris. What a view. Yes, it's one of the most magnificent view you can have from Paris, but only for a uh, small time because this will be here only for five years. He's referring to this scaffolding and that ambitious renovation deadline. And I'm here, me, to win this battle. It's a battle. It's a daily battle. In fact, he's a former military general. And Georges Hollande says that's part of the reason Macron chose him. He's charged with managing this rebuilding effort. They've already raised one billion dollars. He showed us the gaping hole at the church's transept. This is the heart of the drama here, the heart of it all. And pointed out where there once was the roof. Here you will have in wood the framework and above the framework the roof in lead. This is where a lattice of centuries-old wooden beams, known as the forest, made up a sort of attic for the church. It doesn't look like it'll be ready by 2024. Why do you say that? Because you have a lot of scaffold. Yes. yes. But we have a plan which is very precise. Now you are at the end of what we call the stabilization to proceed to the restoration. So. The, in some way, the most difficult has been done. We're going up to the very top. To see the work, chief architect Philippe Villeneuve took us into that web of scaffolding, which had initially obscured wow. the cathedral's soaring ceiling. Incredible. Villeneuve says this renovation is for him a duty and a mission. Adding, my job is that every morning I wake up to save the cathedral. They were putting in place temporary custom-built wooden braces designed to support the flying buttresses. With such a beloved landmark, there has been debate over every detail, chairs versus pews, lighting and art. But Villeneuve told us the structure will be as close to the original as possible. We'll be using the exact same materials as they did during the Middle Ages and in the 19th century, he told us. We went to look in quarries to see if the stones we had were the correct density. It was oak, it shall be oak. The rebuilding techniques are absolutely identical. CBS News visited one of the French forests where they were selecting some of the 1,000 oak trees, at least a century old, for the spire and transept. Earlier this month, they began sawing the first few trees. Notre Dame did not have modern fire safety equipment like sprinklers to slow the blaze, but French firefighters had trained to fight a fire at the cathedral. 
It's beautiful. They used water at lower pressure and tried to avoid directly spraying the hot stained glass. These stained glass windows are absolutely irreplaceable, Philippe Villeneuve told us. These treasures were spared. There are carpenters, stonemasons, iron workers, artisans from about 20 different specialties at work here, some in this medieval place using the most modern of implements. Including a drone fitted with special imaging technology. It's a high resolution photograph, so I really have the cathedral in my computer, actually. The cathedral in the computer. <laughs> Philippe Dillman is the research director at France's National Centre for Scientific Research, the CNRS. He showed us what he calls Notre Dame's digital twin. We made 3D maps to understand the way they were built and the way ancient people built these cathedrals, but also to restore them. And they can compare these images with high-resolution ones taken before the fire. They've examined how the monument moved, where it was stressed by the fire, and the temperatures at which it burned. They're trying to understand where specific pieces were placed. Some materials, like stone, can be reused. But this piece of wood, for instance, has been burned. That's not going to be able to be put exactly. back in place. So no, why does it matter if you know where exactly that came from if you can't put it back? It's a matter of uh, knowledge of the ancient carpentry. And in trying to understand those processes, there have been some unexpected revelations from materials, like that centuries-old wood. We can have indications on the medieval climate, the evolution of the medieval climate, just by looking on the isotopes inside the wood. Wow, so, so you're not only learning about putting the cathedral back together, you're also learning yeah, bits and pieces of history, exactly. so climate. Exactly, so it's science for the rebuilding of the cathedrals, but it's also the cathedrals for science. They're tantalizing details. This precious time capsule is inspiring and challenging artisans of our modern era, charged with preserving the majesty of the past. <laughs>